How do you guys? It's Luke at Luke's Affordable Paint Service, and in this video, I'm going to revisit snow dioramas. Guys, so I'm going back to Snow Diorama Part D. It's two for French. <laughs> um, the reason I'm doing this, guys, is one I've wanting to play with the Crysel uh, Prison Ice and Snow um, product. Plus, um, I want to see if I've got any better because I learned quite a lot doing the last Snow Diorama, and I thought perfect opportunity to use the the new Crysel stuff and just see whether it's the products that I were using that was hindering me okay um, so I'll take you through step by step these are a lot of steps in this that we, we've done numerous times um, so I quickly branch over them um, if you are interested in any of this uh, steps that I do quickly branch over just look through my other videos guys there's plenty of videos showing you how to do the other steps if you're new nothing in this is unachievable to anyone um, it's very straightforward there's very little painting involved um, it's very simple okay I know that sounds daft when you see it but it's all very simple steps that can be achieved by anyone I just need to know a couple of things and it makes it simple alright now keep your eyes peeled because there's a lot of new little products that are going to be popping up in this video because the reason I've done this dial is to play with a lot of things that I'm bringing out as well so if you're interested stay tuned it's the longest video I've done in a very long time it's about half an hour long um, but it's like I say it's about six hours worth of uh, building time condensed into 30 minutes so enjoy I'm not gonna do uh, an announcement at the end and talk at the end this is it um, so if you do want to support the channel guys remember all flocks and everything used in this video below can be purchased which really helps me out all right thank you sit back make sure you've got a beer or two and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below guys see you at the end or i won't see you at the end because <laughs> i'm not going to do the end right bye enjoy the film right so the base i'm using is uh, a six millimeter um foamex uh, i'm going to be sticking it all together with this epoxy resin it's called a devcon Mickey sent me it from Geek Gaming just literally because it's a very popular glue that he does um, and he just says do you want to have a play with it? I was curious so I'm using it in this video just to see what it's like. I'm going to use it on a load of stuff I wouldn't usually use epoxy on um, but I'm testing it, do you know what I mean? So if you wonder why I'm using epoxy, that's why. Okay. One good thing with this stuff, you can use it for uh, water effects, puddles, uh, glue resin miniatures together with it. It, it it will this one will hold 1.5 tons per square inch apparently um, but yeah great glue now I'm just getting a, a rod uh, I think they call these foam routers to be honest I'm not sure of the proper names but I bought this off eBay for about 13 quid um, I use it for routing and cutting out trenches and straight lines um, it's it's literally just a soldering iron that's the idea behind it. Um, it's, it's just a lot easier to use and quicker to use sometimes um, it's quite a useful tool I'll, I'll do a video on them um, when I get round to doing some with, with, actually with it okay so once I've cut my landform um, I just break off the bits like I said because they're using the magical uh, sculptor mold you don't have to be too accurate with it just shape it just get it to a rough shape the less sculpt mold you have to use the better because obviously it's not, it doesn't make it as heavy then I mix up some sculpt mold if you're wondering why it's grey this is something called a uh, thermoflock that I now use it's far better than toilet tissue you get a such be a better result than sculpt mold itself I find um, I put in you know equal measures of uh, plaster and uh, the thermoflock um, and then I mix that in till it's like a cottage cheese and then what we do then is we just literally dorp it on so I filled all that massive hole behind the little rock um, make some sort of realistic ground formation it smooths out very well this stuff um, I put it in all into the gaps the crevices I get rid of that where the rocks meet in the middle I make my own little rock formation just in the middle I can't go over it. It's a mold, guys. If you're not using it, start using it. It's it's life-changing. Then all I'll do is I wet my hands and smooth it all out. 
um, so it's you know nice to work on. Um, and then what I'll do then is I'll mix another batch up. Now the other batch that I'm mixing up is literally to go on top of this um, and fill any gaps that I've missed, like that big crack in the middle. Um, and also we're going to make um, the tracks for the tank going up the hill. So I'm putting a very thin coating uh, all over the top of the uh, what I've already done. It's just so I've got something that I can quite easily put the uh, sculptor mold on. Bearing in mind I've only been working on this diorama at the minute about 20 minutes and look at where we are. Um, <laughs> it's, it, the first layer dried and this stuff, it'll be drying about 10 minutes. It's starting to dry as I'm putting it on. Okay, So that's why I, I love the stuff. It really improves speed, it improves efficiency, it makes a very strong piece. It's just unreal. Okay. Right, now once I've filled all the gaps and everything else, just smooth it out and follow the same procedures as you would as before. Now, to put tracks in it, all I'm doing is I'm getting a model tank that I bought off eBay. <laughs> I was looking for a model tank um, to actually build and paint up, and then that one was on there, it's pretty well painted, and it cost me 15 or 18 quid posted, and it was painted, so that's why I bought that. But all I'll do is I just run it through the sculptor mould, um, and then where the tracks are just pick a few bits up to make it higher and lower and just get like an irregular track formation in it let that dry in about 10 possibly what 15 minutes um, and then we start painting it and stuff <laughs> alright guys so just sit and start blending in while you've got this little layer on just make sure you get in all the areas where any gaps or crevices or Anything you want to fill, if you want to make like a little lump in the landform. Like with me, I'm going to put a lake at the front, so I'm just I'm dipping that down and having it raise up towards the uh, the right side of the diorama. So it's like an embankment. Testing the tank to make sure it fits, um, and that should be dry anytime soon. Right, guys. So as you saw that sculptor mold working um, using the thermoflock and the uh, fine casting plaster from the hardware shop as you can see I mean the light again with it being it's like a light grey it's like a stone colour but the lighting really doesn't help but this is very smooth alright I'll try and get some better pictures after this um, I now make sculptor mold this way uh, the reason I do is because it's a far better product than using um, toilet paper now, if you're a modeler at home and you only need a small amount of sculptor mold, then the toilet paper and um, fine casting plastic is is the cheapest way of doing it. Um, because obviously you're only going to make a small amount and that's going to be enough for you. But anybody that's building terrain for a club, uh, building terrain as a business, um, if you are a serious terrain builder and you're building dios every week, then maybe it is worthwhile buying the thermoflock. Now the thermoflock is £20 for 12 kilos. Now that might sound like a lot, but 12 kilos of paper, guys, it's like a hay bale. It's huge, all right? Um, cellulose insulation it is literally just uh, paper pulp, all right? It's called cellulose insulation because what they do is they actually mix that in a like a, like a huge airbrush, all right? It's the best way of describing it. They empty the paper into a bag, they pour the cellulose solution in, and then they spray it into your roof ceiling space. Uh, and that's why it's the insulation. So the actual paper fibre on its own is fine. Uh, and you can even get it bromide free as well, which is like flame retarders and stuff. So if you are worried about touching chemicals and things, they do it as bromide free as well. Um, so I'll put links to Thermoflop below if I can. It is but made in Australia, so all you Aussies, if you want to make some sculpt mold cheap, that's the way to do it. Uh, and fine casting plaster, just go to your hardware stall. Um, and uh, like I use Howarth Timber, and I ask them for a bag of the hardest casting plaster. Um, and they give me a bag for about six, seven pounds with that. It's 25 kilos, so it's perfect. All right, guys. Um, but that's how I make sculptor mold now. It's already dry, it's already mixed. And yeah, it's it's this is what I mixed this 10 minutes ago, and it's set. <laughs> so on with the build right so it's just a matter of painting your uh, dio brown uh, or whatever base color that you're going with uh, I go with dark brown um, void the rock because we're gonna paint that with washes in a second uh, 
And then to box it in, I use a bit of balsa, so I'll just drag your pencil across uh, so you copy the landscape. Um, and then it cuts really easy with a knife, that's why I use it, it's soft. Um, and then to glue it on, I'm going to be using some of that magic epoxy again, um, just to fit it on. Right now to fill all the edges I just mix up a very small amount of sculpt mould and I, I blend it all in. This acts as an adhesive as well guys so it helps with adherence, it helps with everything. Okay, So just mix up a small bit and press it in, press it in as deep as you can and then you've got some nice solid edges. And then I use some rocks that I've made just from over poured plaster and I literally just chuck it all in a tub and get a good shake. The reason I do this is so when I paint the rocks um, they all colour the same way. Um, so just pour them on and then we stick them on with super glue. And then we're on to the leopard spotting technique. This is just a brown and black wash that I make for my miniatures and everything using ink and matte medium. Just literally dop it on. After the brown ink, we'll go on to the black ink. Um, sorry, a darker brown ink first. Um, and then just get that all over into the deep recesses, making sure that we've covered everything, and then it's just straight over it with a black wash. Now, using the neat black wash um, is, is good because with it being a snow diorama, um, you want to paint everything slightly darker than you're happy with, uh, or usually happy with, because when you see white snow, everything appears darker. Okay, so make this as as dark as you want really okay and pay more attention to the stones because the super glue is pushing the paint away <laughs> right then i dry brush these up uh, with just a bit of uh, khaki um, it's just to add a bit of color because with brown and black it is nice just to add a bit of color and depth to the rock so i dry brush with khaki um, just just on the top so don't go over the top with this dry brush it just brings out some of the details that the the wash hasn't and then from that we're going to a bone dry brush um, and then repeat the same but just on the higher areas and that ties all the rocks and everything together so it all looks like it's the same thing These are just some uh, cheap flexible fences that we will be bringing out in the Luke's APS and Geek Gaming range for all you trainers and diorama builders. Not really designed for wargaming, um, but they're good for diodes as in nice and easy little fences. All I do is I give, they're already brown so I'll just give them a little a bit of a crap dry brush um, because they're going to be covered in snow anyway. Um, and this way it's just a matter of sticking them down and using them as you wish all right i do break them and give them a bit of a wipe off of the the dry brush just so they look a bit more worn and weathered uh, but i don't pay too much attention because remember most of these are going to be covered with foliage and everything else To apply, just, I just simply put some gel super glue on the bottom. Um, now, I use um, the reason I use the gel super glue is just so it doesn't run everywhere. It's just so I can keep it on the bottom. And then I use a Vita Bond super glue activator. This stuff is, again, a big help when you're working with flimsy and stuff, you know, like smaller stuff like this that are hard work. Sorry about the fat arm <laughs> getting in the way, but it's fiddly. Uh, and that's why I use the glue activator just to speed the process up so it just grabs it more or less instantly. Okay. Repeat the process with the smaller pieces and the damaged bit of fence. Um, stick it on, get a spray with some super glue activator. If anybody is interested in buying this activator, you can find this at Geek Gaming also. Thank you. 
Right, so next up is a product I'm very, very proud of. <laughs> this is the one of my pet eights is reeds. Now, I know I'm an advocate of doing things cheaply and everything else, but I'm sick to the back teeth of making reeds. Um, cutting uh, bristles off brushes is a pain in the ass. It's messy. Um, and then sticking them in the hot glue, it takes forever because you've got to hold them there till it starts turning. So this product that we're bringing out very shortly, you, what's good about it is you can pull them out, you know, from very small reeds to very big reeds. The big, the the amount that you grab comes out like that look. Um, and as you pull them out, it's got its own base, so you can simply just super glue it down. There's none of this messing around. Okay. A bit selfish. I brought this product out mainly just for myself <laughs> because I'm sick of making reeds, and I thought this would be the end all of uh, you know making reeds. But we've all had to sit down and talk, and people we think people will like it. I know it is just brush bristles, guys, but it's just a big time saver. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it to be honest. It's something as simple as that, and I think well, let me know in the comments below, guys. Tell me what you think about them. But all I do for applying them is literally just a bit of super glue, stick them down in place, uh, and then they're, they're, they're good to go. Um, none of this messing around with hot glue gun and strands everywhere. Um, but all the brush bristles that do fall off, you do get a couple, just brush them away. Very simple to use, very easy. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with it, if you can't tell. <laughs> Right, once you've got all them in place, I literally just uh, drop some uh, liquid super glue around the bases of them, um, just to make sure that you know they're all totally in place. And then we just dribble some uh, grit around them. Now this is some grit that I've sieved out of some uh, sharp sand. The reason why I like this grit, it's a nice colour naturally, so you don't even have to paint it. You can drop a wash on it if you really want to, um, but I just love the the entire look of it. So once you've got all them in place just literally pour some more liquid super glue over the top of them and uh, they're solid and it gives a bit of support to the reeds as well before you get the water effects in. Right guys now like I said these have been de designed for 28mm um, wargaming so they are a bit oversized for the size of diorama that I'm using so literally I'm cutting these down to size um, I am left handed so I can't cut right handed and the scissors don't work left handed so that's why I'm struggling right now on with the earth cover all I'm doing is I'm painting uh, some um, fast tack glue all over this this is some glue from uh, Warworld Scenics you can use PVA glue guys, the only reason I'm using this is because I've got it and it's quick and I'm trying to get this uh, diorama done as quick as I can around working. Um, it's just so you can move on quicker, that's the only reason why I'm using it. About 15 minutes and this glue's dry. Um, so once you've got that all over and spread, get your tile grout and soil mixture and sieve it over the top. And then what I do is I give this a spray, a watered down spray with uh, isopropanol. Uh, this is just to, to act as a flow aid so the glue penetrates it better on top. Um, so then I, I hit that with that and then hit that with watered down PVA glue. Uh, the glue underneath it, underneath it all soaks together, it all dries very quickly. Um, right. Right, if I were using flock, um, I would wait till it, I would work on it while it was wet. But I'm using static grass, so all I'm doing is I'm putting some patches of uh, uh, glue down, ready for some 6mm static grass. Now I'm going to be using the Warworld Scenic static grass applicator, um, and I put the 6mm grass uh, on the patches, that's all. Now, tap it off, clean it up, uh, and then repeat the process if it's a bit thin in areas. And then I change the grass and the, the end of the applicator to the, to the mid-size mesh. Uh, and then what I do is I add some glue um, just in patches around uh, the 6mm. Uh, 
um, and then apply four mil grass close to it so you get some sort of fading out of the grass length that's all so, so there's, it looks a bit more natural Right, now next up, trees and bushes. All right, I do now have sea foam in my range. Um, if you'd like to purchase any, the links are below, but everybody does this all over the world, guys. So if you want sea foam, you can find it wherever you want. Um, pick out the leaves, literally just pick off any branches and anything that you're not happy with. And then all I do uh, to make them darker, because like I said, with it being a snow diorama, everything appears a hell of a lot darker than it actually is when there's snow on it. So I spray them dark brown um, with the airbrush. All I'm doing is I, I put a bit of my own my homemade flow aid in there, uh, some brown paint, and literally just spray them all over. Nice little tip for you, uh, your ISO and water mixture that you use for flow aid and clean up cleans up very well. Right, now for applying the trees to the diorama, just have, have a rough idea of placement really, just dry fit a few and see what you're going to do, where you're going to put them. Now all I do with the trees is I get um, a hand drill and I just press holes or drill holes through the, uh, through the uh, sculpt mould, it is quite firm so the option to drill always helps. A bit of glue on the base of the tree and then just shove it in. Now for a, uh, for working on the foliage, um, fallen foliage and forest ground covers, I use um, the forest ground covers from the Luke's APS range. I like this one because obviously it's set in winter and it's you know it could be around autumn time even. Um, just sprinkle that all over the ground uh, and under the trees. Now do this before applying all your bushes and trees because it just makes it far easier um, to get the nicer result. And then to stick it down just spray it with ISO and water and then spray it with water down PVA glue. Now for realistic uh, foliage-less <laughs> bushes I use all the offcuts off the sea foam or any damaged bits that are in the bottom of the box. I literally just scrunch them together, put neat PVA down press them into it, stick them on the fence, bend them over the fence and just make sure none of the twiggy stuff like the, the actual stalks are sticking out the bush, just make sure they're going down to the ground and it looks really good. And then it's just a matter of applying the trees um, and again that's by drilling holes, adding glue and then just sticking them in. Now for applying foliage to hard to reach areas just put a bit of the uh, forest ground cover uh, on like some paper and then just pour it under. On the other side the foliage doesn't overhang as much. Now, now what I do is I spray this with the uh, varnish spray uh, over all the trees um, and then what I do is I add the, uh, the forest ground cover to the trees as well so it looks like there's some dead foliage actually on the trees. Uh, it's very subtle, uh, but it really makes a difference. Now, because I'm wanting to continue to work, I'm not going to spray this all over. Uh, what I'm doing is I've just got some matte Mod Podge uh, mixed in um, some water. The reason I'm using matte Mod Podge is because when you put it on with a syringe like this, you can sometimes get it really. It can look really glossy using PVA. So when you're putting stuff on this thick, that's why I use. Right, then I just mix up my resin. Uh, I mix this with quite a lot of brown and green ink. Uh, this is so it's darker and then it gives more depth when you move on. Um, what I'll do at this point is I'll mix in some khaki coloured paint. Uh, this is so uh, the ice, because with it being deeper and near the earth, it becomes muddy. Um, so that's why I'm using uh, the German or beige colour, whatever it is. And mixing that into the resin um, and then it gives you sort of like a mucky dark uh, ice effect under that bit of resin and as you can see just play with it pull it about until you get the desired effect
Right, now while that resin's drying, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> um, but it's coming together quite nicely. I'm very happy with it so far. Um, I've only been working on it about, what, two hours? So, yeah, I'm doing quite well. And I've even applied some little fishes. The next morning, I get up and I pour more resin in there um, but this time I mix it not as uh, dark I actually use it more transparent uh, inks from like Citadel okay and that way that when you pour them far more transparent and you get that nice depth so as you see as this is going over the original pour of resin you can see how, very, how transparent that is it's still got some color um, but what you're doing is you just you're creating depth in the resin so you've got like two layers of resin I mean if you wanted to be make this look a little bit better you could do it like three or four pours and gradually getting lighter each time to create even more depth um, but because I'm putting snow on this I'm not overly bothered because most of it's going to be covered with uh, white paint and and <laughs> and uh, snow effects So as you're playing with it, moving it around, what I like to do is I like to push it away from the fish. I like to, you know, because obviously they're, they're something that you're going to be able to see once it's finished. Uh, so push it away from the fish. I even apply some of it to the reeds, um, so it looks like icicles that have touched up. Um, and literally just keep drawing this up, guys, and it'll eventually stick and hold itself on there. Um, it's a good way of creating a nice bit of ice effects and stuff to the foliage around the water. Right, now the fun part, um, I'll be using the uh, snow from Precision Ice and Snow or Crycell, whatever they're called. First off, all I do is I cover the river, um, the bit that I don't want to have snow on it, um, it's just to stop it getting cloudy. Um, so just cut like a, a ish template of uh, where you want to cover, you don't have to stick it down or anything, just lay it over the top just to protect it. Now, to get the first layer of snow down, what I do is I spray this with the uh, yacht varnish from above. It's a gloss varnish. Um, spray that all over the trees, everything. I'm trying to avoid the road, um, but I know that's more or less impossible with a spray can. Um, but I'm just concentrating on all the areas that I really want the snow. The thing is with this snow, guys, you've got to build it up in layers. Um, you keep adding it and adding it and adding it. I think it took me about nine, nine or ten attempts to get the coverage that I wanted. Because every time you come back and spray it with the uh, the aerosol, it does sort of eat it up or blow it away. Um, but this is how the stuff works. Um, so as you keep tapping it off and knocking it off and recollecting it all up and reapplying, it's slowly and steadily building up like natural snow. And that's why it looks so good. Um, so don't be afraid to just get it on there and knock it off, guys. Okay. Um, it's surprising how much comes off. It's quite hard to explain, um, but the more you use it, the more you, you'll understand. If you want to see a more in-depth um, like review of the product, I have just done a review of it, uh, so have a look for that video. It should be just, just behind this one. I just clean up the road uh, with the brush and then obviously I come in with the airbrush and I try and apply in uh, some of their adhesive just to see if it, if it works any different. Um, it's more or less the same in my opinion. Um, it could be different, it might be me not using it the same. Uh, but I spray it all down the um, on the trees, I spray it around the, the side of the road to build up the snow. Uh, in the recesses where, I, you know, on the places where it looks like it's been pushed out the the troughs or whatever you want to call them, the track marks, um, and that's why I'm using the airbrush, so I've got a bit more accuracy. Now like the massive prick that I am, I forgot to cover it up just in the heat of the moment. Um, literally all I'm doing to clean, clean this off the uh, water, it, it, the, the pond or river, whatever it is, I've just, just dipped my brush in water and I just, I just swat, brush it off, okay? Um, at this point you can do that. 
Now I'm applying uh, Mod Podge, and this is just to get a, a rippled water effect over the area. Uh, this is Gloss Mod Podge, guys. Don't use matte because it'll look terrible. Uh, gloss Mod Podge just to put some nice uh, soft ripples in the water. Now for weathering, I use some Cromlec um, Dark Earth weathering paste. Uh, I know I could use chalk pastels, guys, but the cost of chalk pastels, <laughs> um, I find it. Uh, cheaper just to use things like this uh, and they last a, a lifetime I've had these what since I started doing stuff with Cromlech I mean they sent me these so um, I used to use chalk pastels but the cost of them are just that they work out either the same or sometimes a little bit dearer um, so pre-made weathering powders like this sometimes work out cheaper so just be aware of that just a, a pro tip from me um, because buying pastels is, is, is dear <laughs> and you normally get a lot of pastels that you're not going to use as well and literally the best way of using uh, weathering powders is literally just dorp them on dry then just dip your brush in some water um, and then apply you know like a, a, a semi dry brush um, not too soaking but just a little bit of water on your brush so that makes the, uh, the weathering powder sort of stick to it and then afterwards just varnish it and that way it won't come off. Now I'm going to put some of the weathering powders in the tyre tracks behind the tank where it's actually been, uh, not where it's going. And this is just to emulate fresh ground um, that the tank tracks have dug up. Okay, so I'll just put this down both tank tracks and then we'll add some more snow and ice effects into that to make it look like wet, horrible tank tracks. The way I do this is I get the adhesive and I get the uh, extra snow um, and then I mix that into a paste and then I literally just dorp that on like I were doing with the weathering powders just behind the tank tracks, even put a bit on the tank as well, um, which it, it gives like a nice simulated um, crushed up snow and mud effect. Then I use a bit of the Crysel uh, snow wash and literally just bath this over the wheels and tracks just to give it a bit of melted snow, um, sludge and that sort of grimy snowish shit <laughs> all over the tank. Right and then it's done. Um, as you can see um, I'm, it's a lot better than my last snow diorama and I put this down to the Crysel snow. Um, I have got a little bit better with like obviously sculpting mold and making the trees and bushes um, but very happy with the the project it took me about six hours in total to do this dio so a bit slower than usual um, but it's because I was using the Chrysel snow um, so it, it does add a lot of time onto the builds but look at it it's far nicer and I'm only just learning guys there's a lot I've learnt from doing this dio and I will make it far nicer the next time I go in with the snow. Um, what I like about this is I can do some really deep snow effects with it as well if I wish. I have got to polish up the front of the river, the side and paint all the edging in and everything else to really finish it off. And I probably might do some more videos about adding extras onto this, like I might add a few more figures and mess around. So thanks for watching guys and uh, yeah, I'll see you again for the next video.